Bene, buongiorno. Good afternoon to you all and uh, uh, welcome. Welcome to the audience of the meeting in this special edition. This is a different edition uh, after the pandemic. However, um, it is still uh, a, uh, a very interesting meeting because it's an experience arousing curiosity and interest on what happens and on the most important topics for the life uh, of our country and the planet as a whole. Now, one of the most uh, uh, interesting topics uh, that uh, we already dealt with last year is uh, urban regeneration. So this year we wanted to uh, talk about uh, this uh, topic once again with many distinguished representatives, um, as uh, uh, you can see in the list of speakers. Why have we wanted to talk about this issue once again? Because urban regeneration does not all only uh, concern our country, but uh, the whole planet uh, in future years. Now, 4.5 billion people are living in cities. In 2050, uh, 6.4 billion people out of 9.5 billion people of expected population will be living in cities. Therefore, um, uh, going back to live in the city is becoming interesting once again, on condition that the city uh, is not a place uh, where it is difficult to live, as it was during the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and uh, where most people had to live in ghettos and in the suburbs, but in, on condition that city is increasingly a place where quality of life can be better than in the suburbs, or where there is a possibility uh, to um, uh, be uh, healed, uh, to go to social events, uh, where uh, there is uh, an easier way to relate to infrastructures. Uh, this is the city we expect, we want, and the city uh, that will go hand in hand with the increase in population in future. Italy uh, also has to take on its challenge. How? Uh, this challenge is also connected to the dramatic experience of pandemic, uh, which is going to be one of the recurrent topics during the meeting, not as a, uh, a topic uh, arousing fear, but as a topic uh, um, making us be more challenging. And the city has also been challenged by what has happened. The quality of life in houses will have to be different. The transport system will have to be different. We know that energy development will have to be different, and so on and so forth. So there is uh, many different challenges brought about by uh, the pandemic, uh, uh, which uh, um, will lead us to a series of questions to our speakers. But let's start immediately, because now in the special edition we'll have to uh, be careful and uh, stick to the time given. We have to be as precise as possible, and uh, I will interrupt the uh, uh, speakers after eight of nine minutes. Before starting uh, talking to them, uh, there is uh, a, a very interesting uh, contribution by uh, uh, Giuseppe Bonomi, who is the CEO of uh, Milano Sesto. Um, he uh, personally experienced uh, the uh, development and the um, uh, revival of many different areas. In the expo area, there will be uh, uh, public and uh, private buildings, and uh, Milano Sesto is a very interesting operation just in the suburbs uh, of Milan, and it will be uh, uh, requalified. Um, and there's going to be uh, uh, different uh, uh, residences, uh, social houses, uh, uh, residence halls for students. Uh, so this first video will introduce us to the uh, uh, topic. And uh, it gives us uh, a first focus on uh, uh, urban regeneration. 
We uh, 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 have chosen uh, speakers uh, who will be talking about uh, practical experiences. So we're not talking about uh, urban regeneration in theory, but in practice. We are going to talk about uh, urban regeneration as a whole uh, in all its different aspects, including that of social cohesion, which is the key aspect of regeneration. Uh, and now uh, let's watch uh, the video of uh, Giuseppe Bonomi, CEO of Milano Sesto. In the light of what has happened in recent months and in the complex national and international situation, how does the design of city and urban regeneration change? Well, I believe that the economic shock after the uh, pandemic has not uh, uh, been fully understood yet. Uh, that will be the case over the next weeks and next months. So, companies in particular, and those companies uh, uh, that were already working on this topic uh, must uh, change their business models. Decision makers must be uh, far-sighted. I believe that uh, the uh, programs and uh, uh, projects uh, on uh, 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 technological innovation and on the digitization process are definitely good, but uh, honestly speaking, um, they are uh, somewhat uh, redundant and uh, they will not produce short-term effects, but medium and long-term effects. Out of what I'm doing, uh, I think that the uh, uh, Italian government uh, due to the uh, recent history uh, uh, of last century uh, should uh, implement measures enabling companies and citizens to overcome the shock in the short term. And uh, the house is key on this. Now you are responsible for a major project, uh, Milano Sesto. Mm. What is the relation uh, between your project uh, and what you've just described? Now, I believe that the uh, um, urban uh, policies of uh, uh, the end of the last century and uh, the early 2000s uh, have led to serious damage in social and economic terms. In particular, over those years, there has always been a focus on the offer of space, mostly. Uh, this is less to social unrest. Uh, let's uh, think about uh, degraded suburbs uh, which uh, uh, exist uh, throughout Europe. Uh, now, the classic example uh, are the uh, uh, Paris banlieue. So, I think that uh, this model has to be radically changed. Basically, we need to focus on the provision of services. I've been uh, lucky enough to uh, find uh, a very important strategic partner for the development of our area. And I remind you that our area is the industrial abandoned areas, which is the largest one in Europe. And our partner uh, has been a very important one and has a medium and long term policy which uh, uh, makes our work easier in planning uh, the development of, of abandoned areas. And thanks to this partner, I have applied the concept which I fully share, uh, that is to focus on rentals and not on sales. This is perfectly in line with the policy of this company, of this partner, on a medium and long-term basis. and. Uh, Focusing on rental means uh, providing an answer to
to a serious social unrest and uh, uh, to a market demand, very high market demand. Thank you very much to Giuseppe Bonomi. I think he uh, very well introduced uh, Mario Abadessa. Uh, now, starting from your professional experience, Mr. Abadessa, uh, how do you see the challenge of urban regeneration in cities? Uh, uh, what are the problems and what are the opportunities? Mario Abadessa is the young CEO of Ains Italy. Uh, he is quite young, but he has a long-standing experience of the development of urban areas, especially in Milan. And uh, uh, he will uh, continue on what Giuseppe Bonomi has just said. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me. I totally agree with uh, uh, what uh, 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 my uh, colleague and partner has just said, uh, Giuseppe Bonomi, together with us, is working on this uh, project on Milano Sesto. In its name, Milano uh, Sesto, uh, already uh, uh, um, gives the answer to your question, as in what are the opportunities. Now, the first opportunity in Milan and in Italy uh, is Milano Sesto. A city like Milan, uh, which is the most dynamic and at present most important city in Italy, well, we call it the engine of Italy, uh, has uh, a, such a small geographical boundary. You have uh, Sesto San Giovanni and you have uh, the city of Monza, cities which are close to Milan, which are now called the suburbs. But in other European cities, uh, such as London or Paris, uh, that wouldn't be the case. They would be the city centre because Milano Sesto, Sesto San Giovanni, uh, is connected to the uh, Duomo, to Milan Cathedral, uh, by metro just in 20 minutes. So, focusing on uh, what uh, Mr. Bonomi has previously said, um, uh, what is the meaning of urban regeneration? Now, regenerating means uh, trying to build something which is better than previous experience. So it is very good to focus on environmental sustainability, but let me say that uh, this is quite banal, it is quite banal to say that because today any uh, 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 real estate uh, uh, contribution must be in line with the international uh, standards. No new building, be it uh, big or small, uh, has to pollute, and this is clear. In urban regeneration today, uh, we need not only to work on environmental sustainability, but also on social sustainability, uh, which is uh, key for business. So this is not up to individual operators. Today, social inequality and therefore uh, the fact that uh, two social classes live in two different parts of the city can create a conflict uh, which is not good for anyone. I'll just give you an example. You, try, you asked us to be practical, very practical on, uh, in our speech. A very practical example of social inequality is what happened in Paris before COVID uh, uh, with the uh, protest by the Gilets Jaunes. Now, uh, two uh, thirds of the Sundays that year, the shops in Paris uh, were closed which means that the shop owners, even in the Champs-Élysées, uh, had uh, an enormous, eco enormous economic damage due to that social inequality. So, in urban gener regeneration, we, try, we need to try and bridge the gap between the different social classes. And the first practical way to do that is to avoid making mistakes, as we did in the past, uh, where suburbs were created. Now, the word suburb in itself has to disappear. 
in uh, the vocabulary of uh, urban development because the suburbs in Italy are often conceived as uh, a place uh, where people only sleep, like the suburb called Zen in Palermo or Scampia in Naples, which is totally divided by the city center. Having a city uh, uh, which uh, develops step by step uh, it's clear that development has to be different in the different parts of the city, but the different types of development does not be in conflict uh, with one another. With one another, uh, the city has to extend and develop natural naturally uh, with the development of services in different areas, as we are doing in Milano Sesto, in order to connect the suburbs uh, to the city while integrating the suburbs and not separating the suburbs. So I've tried to be l less philosophical as possible and as practical as possible. Thank you. Thank you to Mario Abadessa uh, because you stick to the time given and because you've introduced us uh, to the meaning of uh, an inclusive city, a city which does not separate but uh, uh, unites the citizens, which is going to be the challenge ahead. Now, uh, Luigi Benatti uh, uh, and uh, the mayor Marco Bucci will be able to talk about that because that is pretty much connected to the planning and to to the administration policy of cities. Now, let's talk about uh, uh, the environment and energy, which are key in urban regeneration. So, uh, uh, the uh, um, a CEO of SNAM, Marco uh, Alvera, uh, will now be speaking. And the question to him is the following. Uh, how is the energy sector uh, uh, now uh, behaving in order to promote sustainability in cities uh, from an environmental point of view and uh, uh, while implementing and uh, fostering uh, uh, economic development? Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, when we talk about energy, um, we often look at the global situation from uh, and the numbers of people that will go and live in the cities uh, so that means that we will have to build a new Paris every month from now to 2050 in terms of construction materials and uh, energy consumption because uh, there is an increase in uh, consumption when a family moves uh, from uh, the countryside to the city. So this is the challenge, as uh, we were saying, is that we need to provide much more, to supply much more energy in a clean way without uh, renouncing the lifestyle we are uh, used to. I will uh, touch briefly upon four different themes, that is to say how uh, climate changes and COVID are related. What is it happening at a global level in terms of energy, great opportunities, and the SG themes that in a way are defining clean energy as well as governance themes for all the different companies and what SNAM is doing, in particular in terms of cities in Italy. COVID, in a way, redefined our way to live in our homes. There are so many different things that we um, can do in our homes. Uh, our home has become our workplace. The great architects won't be able to say uh, what will happen in the next 10, 15 years, if there will be more offices or more uh, home houses. So it is very important to be able to, to transform offices into uh, private houses uh, because uh, there are different buildings uh, that uh, are now very um, suitable for open space offices but that cannot uh, be transformed into houses. So COVID in a way changed our uh, habits and this is very 
important in terms of climate uh, uh, changes because infrastructures are the same we used to have about 40, 50 years ago. So when uh, there is uh, this kind of dramatic change, we have the opportunity to think about a new world made of uh, clean energy. And uh, uh, carpe covid, that's what was uh, said. Uh, so it's just like a carpe diem, Mario Draghi, today talked about um, Europe and the way it can be uh, stronger. Zimmerman uh, already pro foresee, foresaw 1,000 billion euros for investment for uh, the uh, transition recovery funds transition mechanism. There are so many new powers at stake after the pandemic and uh, there will be uh, an increase. Today we have really the opportunity to move towards a world that is based only and exclusively on renewables. So the uh, horizon is that of uh, 2050, but there are still so many things to be done. We are uh, focusing on uh, bio uh, gases uh, that are produced uh, from uh, agricultural uh, um, products and then hydrogen that can be produced uh, from the sun and we believe that the hydrogen hydrogen that we will be using the most is that of uh, solar energy. The uh, solar energy divides uh, water in oxygen and uh, hydrogen and this hydrogen can be uh, very important for the for the decarbonization without uh, changing too much our lifestyle and uh, the existing structures. Hydrogen has always uh, been uh, seen um, by scientists as the final uh, solution to have a uh, clean energy in not only in terms of production, because it actually is self-produced, but uh, uh, this means that uh, um, production is uh, moved towards uh, the Mediterranean countries where uh, the weather is uh, sunnier. Hydrogen has always have had the problem of cost, so it was uh, 40 times more exper expensive than oil now it is five times more expensive than oil and we have uh, carried out a study in a few years we can be able to produce hydrogen at uh, competitive uh, costs uh, for different uh, purposes. Uh, this would be a very important breakthrough uh, with uh, renewable energy at competitive cost that uses uh, at least partially existing infrastructures. And here is very well placed because we have uh, national leaders uh, uh, that are actually focusing on hydrogen. Big uh, Italian companies uh, already have produce hydrogen. We also have uh, infrastructures uh, that connect us uh, with uh, the northern of uh, north of Europe uh, and we have a very good uh, geographical uh, uh, position uh, because uh, obviously here we have uh, more sun than uh, in the north of Europe and uh, this in a way uh, help so the environmental, social and government, uh, this, the environmental aspect here is extremely important and uh, this will become a, um, a very important factor for those who buy capital within uh, companies, for those who buy shares, and for all the great rating agencies. I also work for uh, Standard and Poor's, uh, uh, and uh, um, there is a lot of attention towards ESG, and uh, this not only to maximize the results in the short term, but also to take into account these three dimensions that will pave the way to a new type of capitalism that will be based on the three dimensions. On my last, the, the uh, last minute I have at my disposal, Slum has launched important startups for cities, one for biogas, uh, transforming uh, waste in clean gas and uh, uh, that can be used for different purposes. Then we also have uh, Slum for Mobility, uh, one 
more than one million uh, cars uh, using uh, gas that obviously pollute less uh, than those uh, that are traditionally uh, fueled. And uh, so then uh, there is uh, and it's an important aspect that is to say the car is the same, so you don't have to, to buy a new car to have that. Then we have another startup, SNAM for Efficiency. So we actually restructure houses uh, with the uh, environmental incentive uh, half of the uh, pollution is uh, still due to uh, private heating. Then we have a startup for hydrogen, for stationary hydrogen and mobility hydrogen, and then uh, forestation because uh, we need uh, to uh, catch, capture uh, CO2. And then uh, obviously we need to have uh, uh, the possibility to absorb the CO2 present in the atmosphere. And then we have uh, the SAM Foundation launched four years ago that helps in the S dimension of ESG. It works with the cities, we have summer camps for children, and we work with many different uh, about social uh, enterprises. So, well, I could be talk a lot more. I would just like to uh, give my regards to the mayor. We work uh, with a lot of uh, cities and uh, we work uh, with the different aspects uh, of uh, the life of these cities. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Alvera. And I would um, like to say that this intervention opened up a new aspect that of hydrogen and the renewal of our plants. We know that one of the problems of our cities is the obsolescence of uh, our uh, structures and our plants. So this is where the challenge starts. And uh, uh, this is extremely interesting uh, when we think about hydrogen and the opportunity hydrogen gives to Italy. And uh, this is uh, certainly something we will have to uh, deal upon also in the future. Let's go back now to the uh, so-called traditional aspect of regeneration, that is to say, um Engineering. Luigi Benatti is an architect, an architect at the uh, Teco Studio Teco in Bologna, but he also works abroad. And uh, well, my question to him is: uh, uh, this uh, uh, planning acti activity is uh, fundamental, fundamental for regeneration. So, what are the activities? Uh, what are the uh, obstacles and opportunities in the uh, current uh, legal and organizational situation in Italy. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would like to thank you for uh, this uh, introduction. And uh, would like also to thank the uh, speakers who preceded me with their very interesting interventions. And uh, I think that it is clear from these interventions uh, that there is a need to talk about urban regeneration in a very accurate way, because urban regeneration uh, actually is an intervention uh, uh, possible solution in our cities that is particularly interesting for each citizen. The Italian um, building heritage is uh, actually uh, in the hands of families, is how households, 50% of our population lives in cities that have uh, between 100,000 uh, inhabitants and more. Let me, that's, that means that this is a theme that is interesting for everyone, the whole of our population in Italy. So, well, uh, regeneration, urban regeneration is a very actual topic. Uh, someone talked about uh, social uh, sustainability, energy and sustainability. Alvera talked uh, about uh, this with uh, extreme uh, knowledge. And uh, the few minutes I have um, at my disposal will be devoted to the projects and planning and the uh, obstacles and challenges we have to face. So, well, actually, the uh, these interventions are extremely important for so many people. We have a 
a lot of buildings that have, uh, but that are quite old. 40% of our houses uh, have over 40 years. So uh, from the year 2000, only 30% of the existing houses were built. And uh, so while well, uh, restructuring uh, these uh, buildings is extremely important. Uh, urban regeneration has uh, scale aspects as well that are also very interesting. It is not just uh, the uh, requalification of uh, some buildings, but uh, it is the requalification of uh, portions of cities that were underwent uh, some transformations and decay. And uh, so these are re really some urban voids and also uh, the suburbs uh, that are uh, uh, the areas that um, that have the highest number of inhabitants and here the building quality, the urban standards, the environmental standards are too low. So the challenge is quite difficult and it calls for, from my point of view, and here I will probably uh, already uh, give uh, some suggestions to the intervention uh, by um, the major, who will, the major who will talk after me. So this is uh, something that calls for some form of evolution. I think that public administrations already are working at this change, at this evolution, but they should actually, in a way, uh, speed it up, so to speak. And uh, so we have a lot of uh, rules and uh, provisions uh, at state and regional level. As you know, uh, urban regulations are uh, normally um, regional uh, uh, rules, but we also have a law dating back to 1941. So let's think about how many years went by without a change, a legal change in at national level. So I think this is a very important aspect we need to focus what we are doing on cities and especially on suburbs because uh, we have to take them out of uh, uh, their banality, so to speak, and to turn them into interesting places. So there's a challenge that is open to everyone, all the professionals that can be involved in this field, but I believe that there is, if there is no intervention at a central level uh, that should be an incentive for the involvement of uh, private resources and as well uh, the need to remove some duties and taxes and rules. Uh, there are some uh, buildings uh, that uh, need to uh, be to respect some rules that date back to 1961, 68, and uh, this has to do with the height of buildings. And uh, this obviously needs uh, uh, to be changed because it is very difficult to recover these buildings if you cannot build uh, higher uh, buildings. So we need to think about profit and. Uh, the profit go, has to go hand in hand with sustainability. So this has to be the central point, the focus of the work of public administration. So uh, we need to be able to co coordinate what we do, but uh, in a fast way. Uh, public administrations uh, cannot uh, work at, for uh, 10 to 15 day, years uh, to uh, new laws because when they are actually issued, they are already too old. So we need to find uh, tools that can uh, guarantee a higher speed. Another important uh, theme is uh, that we need to help. or uh, to boost the social participation in this kind of intervention. So let's think about uh, the creation of um, a market of building skills. So if there are so many different building skills, so we could actually create uh, some kind of market that will, uh, in a way, uh, uh, foster uh, 
purchase and sale of these skills that can be uh, also based on uh, sums that are uh, um, used for public interventions. The city has to be looked at as a whole, uh, so public administrations need to uh, manage these processes, make them possible. So let's think about the different uh, uh, needs, also environmental needs of uh, citizens who need new open spaces, safe open spaces. That of safety is another important aspect of urban regeneration. And uh, so this is really a very uh, difficult uh, um, challenge. that needs to be seen as a strategical challenge. And to conclude, this kind of mentality is spreading in the actions and measures foreseen, for instance, now during the pandemic, the environmental bonus 110%, something that is quite topical, that could be actually a good strategy for requalification. So this is a very specific aspect that should be followed by a general action on the part of public administrations that can be uh, used for a wider uh, planning activity that goes beyond uh, the uh, transformation of our cities and uh, so that we can move uh, from uh, an urban level to uh, the uh, very local level within the city and the building. So this is an extremely important theme on which we need to reflect. Thank you. Thank you, Luigi Benatti. Uh, since we do not have so much time uh, left, I'll just uh, now leave them, uh, give the word uh, to uh, Mayor Bucci. And uh, well, the same question to you. What are the challenges for uh, public administrations in terms of re urban regeneration after also the, the interventions we heard? Thank you very much to all of you. For me, it is uh, a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much to all the speakers before me. Thank you to Marco Alvera. I hope he uh, enjoyed uh, uh, going on his sailing boat, just like me. Now, to follow up on what has been said, I think that um, every public uh, administrator has a duty, uh, that is, uh, uh, to uh, 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 leave his city, his country, better than the way he has found it. Uh, this is not something ethical, but this is real. This is our own duty. In order to do that, we must have a vision and a strategy. Now, uh, what is the vision of our city? You know that I'm not an administrator uh, uh, in business. Uh, I've been uh, 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 working in the private sector for many years, in, even in the United States. I, I just started being a public administrator three years ago. I know what the city needs, and I know where we want to go. Urban uh, regeneration is one of the key issues for us. We have areas in our city which must be completely regenerated. And as my friend Renzo Piano says, we need to build on what has already been built. We don't have much space in Genoa. You know that Genoa is built in between the sea and the mountains. We need to build on what was already built. This is something more than urban regeneration. And we need to avoid the suburbs. Genoa has an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is that we have 20 uh, little uh, 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 villages that are all connected by roads uh, and rivers uh, making up Genoa, which means that we have 20 city centers. We don't have suburbs. We have 20 city centers, and they all need to be provided with services and activities. And this is also a disadvantage because that requires a lot of work, but in the end, it becomes an advantage because we have already built uh, 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 circles, uh, circles which are uh, one next to the other. There must be many different city centers in the area where citizens can be given all the benefits. The word suburb must disappear. Uh, 
this is totally unacceptable. If you want to have uh, a city with a high quality of life, every place in the city must have the same quality of life, must have the necessary conditions to live well. If there is uh, no uh, suburb, if there are no suburbs at all, then all the uh, areas in the city are regenerated on an equal footing. One of the projects we have uh, uh, is uh, to um, take the seawater and take it back to the old city walls. This is a very complex project indeed. Uh, 500 million euro for that. Uh, taking the city, uh, taking the sorry, the sea um, uh, next to the city walls, uh, so that uh, there are small peninsulas which are uh, 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 created. Now it's easier to see than to explain, but this is a very uh, important project of urban regeneration, whereby the sea uh, is going to be taken back to the city. Something which in the early 20th century uh, was not done because industrial areas and commercial areas were created between the city and the sea. We are also working on a red circle uh, under the bridge. Um, so all the area under the Morandi Bridge will be regenerated with a project where all the areas will be uh, connected with one another. It will not just be residential areas or uh, industrial areas. Uh, all the areas uh, uh, will um, have all the different components. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will have uh, areas uh, just full of offices where from seven uh, at night there will be no one. No, urban regeneration has to create neighborhoods where people live 24 hours a day, where there is a commercial activity 24 hours a day, and where all uh, services are provided. This is key. Uh, administrations must clearly be quicker, must not uh, uh, be, um, uh, let's say, uh, slaves, so to speak, uh, of laws, must not be totally subject to uh, uh, laws, but must go hand in hand with laws. For example, uh, we work a lot on the master plan to update it and to change it in order to do what we need to do because what really counts is our vision, not the vision that was written 30 years ago. And if laws are not uh, uh, updated, we must update them. The law must be at our service. Is not, it must not be the, uh, the contrary. And then uh, we need to help uh, the private sector. The private sector must be enabled to do business, otherwise uh, the private uh, investors would not invest. So we must be profitable. There is a lot of competition uh, among all cities. Everyone wants to attract investments. My role here is to show that investing in Genoa is much better than investing elsewhere. So by doing this, uh, uh, I will do something good for my city. And we can do it. At the same time, we don't have to forget that uh, uh, only having a profitable investment is not enough for a vision of a city because an investment can be profitable over three, four or five years. And then if you have just created, for example, areas with just offices and after seven o'clock at night uh, there is no one uh, there's no one around, then everything will be useless. The investment must be uh, profitable uh, even in terms of the environmental and social governance as in uh, investment must lead to the creation of jobs in cities and must improve the quality of life. Hence, the public administration must help investors not only to have a profitable investment and also help citizens to have a profitable investment to benefit from it. If the city itself gives a high quality of life, then the high quality of life has a very good impact on all the citizens. In addition to that, uh, there must be a sort of uh, fil rouge in urban regeneration. Quality of life is a very nice um, term, but then 
it must be implemented in a practical way. For example, uh, in our uh, project on the uh, waterfront, uh, the water is going to be taken back uh, to the city walls. This will have an impact and will have a meaning on uh, the everyday life of our citizens. Uh, we want to have a red circle uh, because uh, there must be uh, uh, an interaction uh, between uh, uh, the high line and the, dial, and the down line. There must be a, a, a meeting point um, uh, and a point uh, connecting the different parts of the valley of Genoa. So there must be a fil rouge in urban regeneration, which creates uh, a sort of uh, landmark. The landmark defines urban regeneration through something that can be easily be seen by everyone. To conclude, public administration um, has the duty to uh, serve its own citizens. Uh, the territory uh, is not owned by the administration, but by citizens. It might seem banal, but this is important. If an administration says, this is mine, well, it is wrong. We are the administrators of citizens' properties. We work for the citizens. We are at their service. So we need to remember that we decide for our shareholders, the citizens, and for the children of our shareholders, because we have to think on a long-term basis. If we start thinking and working with this approach, things may change. I've seen experiences around the world, which I traveled a lot, um, and um, uh, in turn, uh, from a personal point of view, I had a lot of relations with other administrations, and what I'm saying is shared by many other administrators throughout the world. We need to respect the citizens because uh, uh, they tell us what we need to do, uh, and uh, they also can ensure a return for investment to private investors. Thank you very much to the mayor for his very interesting uh, um, food for thought. Uh, a new way, uh, he has talked about a new way to be an administrator. Now, uh, uh, to conclude, let's continue with the last two uh, spe uh, speakers, infrastructures and transport and electric inf infrastructures. Uh, Andrea Gibelli, uh, CEO of Ferrovia Nor Milano, uh, what is uh, the challenge of regeneration for the network of infrastructures? Yes, uh, good afternoon. I have been following with great interest uh, the uh, theme uh, tackled today, and uh, in a way, I can uh, already talk about uh, the uh, trend adopted by Ferrovia Nord Milano uh, in its uh, re uh, restructuring project. So, um, Ferrovia Nord Milano. Uh, will not only place uh, new railways with all the uh, structural needs uh, that uh, are uh, uh, com currently uh, being dealt with in our region, but we are also thinking about uh, urban regeneration on a scale that is based on railways, and that is to say, our way of thinking, as uh, some speakers already said, uh, we um, do not think at l about local regeneration. As uh, Mayor Bucci was uh, saying, we do not want uh, to represent only small realities. We want uh, to represent uh, a value chain that uh, for uh, uh, Liguria is that of the waterfront, whereas uh, from the point of view of such a uh, Ferrovia Nord Milano, uh, um, our uh, 
most interesting part is uh, the route from Cadorna to the airport of Milano Malpensa. So we are thinking about uh, the infrastructures of uh, these uh, 72 kilometers uh, with a project of urban regeneration that takes into account all the municipalities that uh, are along uh, this uh, route in the province of Varese as well. Uh, so, well, uh, I cannot obviously talk about all the uh, different projects, uh, but uh, we have um, uh, inventing uh, cities in uh, Milano uh, with uh, this, uh, well, this is a good example of this uh, uh, regeneration chain, and then we have uh, the regeneration project in Saronno, uh, that uh, is a city that was uh, created uh, by the uh, people working for the rail railways in the 19th century, then uh, things uh, changed uh, through different uh, regulatory plans, uh, and a lot of people live there, but now there is a void, there is a, a um, lack of uh, reconversion of uh, building uh, of the building uh, uh, resources in this area. So we are really reflecting upon what we can do uh, along these uh, 72 kilometers uh, using obviously new technologies. Mobility is a very important element. When we talk about uh, cities, we I like to quote the idea of uh, the city of 2050. There are so many different ideas. Anyway, we talk a lot about mega cities. That is to say, well, these are not, um, well, these are actually cities that are deeply interconnected so that people uh, can uh, live, uh, move and uh, work in ways that are completely different from the past. Facilitating mobility means that uh, uh, people don't have to move the way they used to one century ago uh, to uh, generate then uh, suburban areas, but rather uh, to uh, work and live in the same place. Uh, the uh, uh, COVID uh, uh, has actually made uh, this uh, theme even more uh, actual, uh, but everything has to be done in a very speedy way, in a safe way, and in areas that have uh, uh, are now in decay because of urbanization uh, caused by the railway system in the past. So we have uh, big projects that we uh, um, I've decided to base on uh, uh, sustainability. Uh, the, as a Mayor Bucci was uh, saying, that means we, we need to build upon what is already built. We have a railway, we are rethinking about it, this line, so that it can interact with all the areas that it uh, runs through and uh, uh, for instance uh, there is the need to create a relationship uh, with the, the city of Milan that is not that of a satellite city uh, on an axis that is uh, very important for the development of our region, that is to say the Cadona Malpensa axis, with obviously some interventions that uh, are based on uh, the re uh, planning of uh, spaces with uh, a strong social element, uh, with a strong vision of the new role of man. So this is uh, an idea that uh, we in Ferrovie Nord have adopted, that is to say, uh, this uh, the area, the 700 meters near the rails, will be um, devoted to 800,000 trees. This is the same number of people that uh, we that move along this uh, line. So, on an area of uh, 72 kilometers, there will be a cycling route connecting all urban areas. from Cadorna to Malpensa, uh, as part of a big project that will be based on different themes and uh, overlapping themes, 
but which will be focused on the need to help people to work and uh, also to live at home so integrated mobility and smart working teleworking and uh, this new role uh, of of men in uh, our region even uh, those things that we look at as natural are built by men so the use of new technologies that will be uh, added to these new trees a new uh, idea a new concept of urban center uh, that will improve the quality of life so uh, this uh, uh, interaction center and uh, um, suburbs uh, this can be actually overcome by a new concept of mobility that is uh, better integrated with the urban areas, with uh, an environment that is uh, actually um, deeply influenced by men, and it can become uh, extremely attractive. In Saronno, some private entrepreneurs decided to complete some areas uh, that are neighboring to some areas uh, belong, that belong to Ferrovie Nord, so that means that uh, uh, we are going beyond the uh, railway area. Thank you, thank you to uh, Mr. Gibelli, who showed us the importance of infrastructures in the development of cities and uh, uh, territories. And then we have a, a very last uh, speech, the importance of uh, uh, um, electrical infrastructure by Vincenzo Ranieri, who is the CEO of uh, e Distribuzione. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you. Now, going back to what you said at the beginning on the uh, global trend of uh, urbanization, uh, whereby in 2050 uh, uh, there will be uh, an increase of the population living in city by twofold. We need to understand that uh, together with uh, urbanization, uh, uh, there's uh, also uh, a decrease in carbon use and another trend. Now, the combination of the three uh, trends, uh, uh, the third one is uh, uh, energy transition, uh, force us to think, uh, to rethink uh, the uh, the model uh, of uh, cities. First and foremost, because in the past uh, the city uh, um, has always uh, uh, been a very important at territorial level, and now uh, cities have to um, accompany, let's say, uh, uh, this change. Why electrical and uh, uh, energy? Uh, uh, infrastructure must uh, contribute to urban uh, regeneration. Today, urban areas uh, uh, occupy 5% of uh, surface, uh, but account for 70% uh, of energy consumption and uh, uh, greenhouse gases emissions. So we need to uh, shift to uh, smart grids requiring um, sustain, uh, environmental sustainability and energy efficiency. In, uh, energy infrastructure must play a key role uh, in promoting sustainability in cities, in regenerating uh, the neighborhoods, and must provide services and new opportunities to citizens. Beyond all possible definition, a smart city must be a city built for man. And this is a key message. So electric infrastructure uh, must meet the four main goals. Providing energy where demand is concentrated. This is the first one. That must be done in an efficient and effective way and in a profitable way. The production sources will be a decent, will have to be increasingly decentralized. The eco bonus we now have in Italy will strongly promote the development of photovoltaic plants. The second goal is to promote new forms of sustainable mobility, especially electrical mobility. In 2030, on Italian roads, 
there will be more than 6 million electric vehicles. Then uh, we need to uh, uh, promote uh, the use of uh, local energy, as in we need to ensure through uh, local energy, uh, energy self-sufficiency. This is a concept of energy uh, community which can apply to a city, to a country or to um, a, a condo. The fourth objective, the fourth goal, and this is uh, a goal where uh, Italy is a step ahead, and this is a competitive advantage that uh, Italy has to exploit. As I was saying, the fourth goal is that uh, electric grids uh, are also transporting data today. They uh, transport billions of billions of uh, pieces of information every day. Um, and they carry, they transport uh, 7,000 billion data every year. Information is a very important uh, asset. So, the electric uh, infrastructure, which must be resilient, uh, flexible, and uh, smart enough, uh, thanks to digitization, plays a key role uh, to uh, boost a new urban model. Here, there is a very important aspect uh, which we need to focus on. Uh, we need to uh, promote a platform model. Infrastructures must be able to uh, integrate and the electric grid uh, must uh, integrate uh, with uh, transport systems. Let's uh, think about all the electrical recharges and even uh, smart uh, uh, lightning systems must be developed. Also the uh, um, wide band, ultra wide band must be developed. In Italy, we have very good examples of that. Now, through the electrical grid, uh, um, we promote the use of the fibers. This creates the advantage of minimizing the uh, environmental uh, impact. Our cities are strongly urbanized and built, and there's not much space for infrastructures. So we need to find a way to uh, reuse uh, existing infrastructure or layers in order to build new layers. So a city which is inclusive uh, and smart uh, is not simple to reach. But it is the duty uh, of uh, decision makers uh, to uh, provide uh, tools and solutions that makes uh, that make this transition possible. Now, with reference to our company, uh, uh, we uh, have uh, strengthened uh, existing infrastructures. We have improved the quality of our services. Uh, consumption will be increasingly electrified and our services uh, will have different types of impact. So one of the uh, uh, innovations we're working on, and I won't be too long here, is uh, a new made in Italy technology whereby we can uh, uh, detect um, a, a failure uh, in less than one second. Our investment plan in infrastructures must increasingly integrate uh, renewable sources of energy. Even uh, small plants, uh, we now have, uh, we'll have 2 million new renewable energy plants by the year 2030, which will need to be used. In our investment plan, 5.6 billion euro um, until 2022, 1 billion euro will be allocated to cities with over 50,000 inhabitants. Then the investment plan also focuses on smaller cities. So we will, be, we will be spending 1 billion euro over three years for big cities. 
Why so? Uh, because it is necessary to regenerate cities from an infrastructural point of view and uh, uh, this target has to be achieved as soon as possible. That's because infrastructures must be the first step to then develop all different types of services. That's because infrastructures are necessary to then provide new services. Smart cities are cities that are built for men, which means that citizens must be enabled to manage their energy budget with as much information as possible. So, uh, we are currently working on infrastructures, we are providing new uh, services uh, within a project called uh, Urban Futurability. This is a pilot project that will be launched this year in uh, Matera. Uh, we will have a similar projects in uh, 2021 and we will have one project uh, in Genoa. And I'm happy to say that now that I see the mayor of Genoa here. Uh, I think this is important for all Italian cities and for Genoa uh, in particular. Genoa is very important uh, for us. Uh, that was uh, the first uh, uh, digital lab uh, uh, on infrastructure, uh, on infrastructures that we developed in, it, in Italy. Now, our energy uh, is uh, sustainable and our work must involve citizens, companies and infrastructures to provide services to the community as a whole and to promote the idea of uh, uh, the city of the future. I'm really impressed by what has been said. Uh, unfortunately, we have already exceeded at the time at our disposal, but anyway, um, it seems clear to me that regeneration is the result of a cooperation between different uh, subjects. Uh, let's think about uh, uh, professionals of the urban sector, uh, uh, real estate uh, experts, uh, professionals of uh, the environmental and uh, energy sector, and also a cooperation with the public administrations uh, that uh, calls for a passion for their uh, work, for their cities, and for our country. And I do believe that today it is clear that we do have the chance and the opportunity and Italy as a country can really play a very important role in the regeneration of its cities which will be a very important step for the development of our country. Thank you all and uh, for those uh, of you who will continue to follow us uh, we do hope that you're going to enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you.